Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about Lenore City. I'm going to try and give you a better idea of what to expect if you're thinking about moving here. So to start off with, Lenore City is in Loudoun County, Tennessee. Uh, its population is about 10,117 if you're going off of the 2020 census and it's part of the greater Knoxville area. These notes have came from Wikipedia and I've highlighted the things that I found significant. So Lenore City was settled in 1810, founded in 1840, and incorporated in 1907. The Native Americans were the first people here. They lived here thousands of years before any of the European settlers came. It was a tribe called the Cherokee Indians that were the original inhabitants of this area. In the early 19th century, North Carolina gave William Lenore 5,000 acres as payment for his service in the American Revolutionary War. There are actually two guys, David Campbell and Alexander Outlaw, who filed a case against him, saying that it was their land. Well, they ended up losing, and so it ended up going to William Lenore. He used it mainly for agricultural reasons, and then he ended up passing it down to his children. Okay, so fast forward to 1880s, or the 1880s. A thriving coal mine industry in East Tennessee's Cumberland Plateau region led to the development of some company towns. Um, there were a couple of investors, Charles McClung McGee and Edward Sanford. Side note, if that name sounds familiar, Charles McClung McGee's grandson was Charles McGee Tyson, who the Knoxville Airport is named after. But anyhow, these two formed the Lenore City Company. They incorporated in April of 1890. Uh, with 800000 in stock, and they bought the Lenore Estate, which was 2,700 acres, for $300 an acre. They, they ended up building up the city. Um, they thought it would be a little more successful than it was. Some recessions kind of slowed it down, but it did end up surviving. Fast forward now into the 20th century. The, the Great Depression came, and the federal government started investing in infrastructure, the Tennessee Valley Authority, otherwise known as the TVA, constructed the Fort Loudon Dam and reservoirs that led to many jobs for people in the area, and as well as some other infrastructure projects as well. A little bit down the line in the 50s and 60s, uh, the construction with the interstate highway system led to I-40 and I-75, which intersect in the northeast part of Lenore City. And then a little bit further down the line in the 80s, you had Highway 321 that was built, also known as Lamar Alexander Parkway, and that provided access from Lenore City to the Great Smoky National, the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Um, it also connected Lenore City and Maryville. And then that leads us into the 21st century um, and some of the developments that have popped up in the 2000s. Ruby Tuesday, Chili's, Cracker Barrel, Aubrey's, Zaxby's. Um, you got Home Depot, Walmart, Ingalls. Um, you have pretty much everything that you need off of, it's off of 321 is where most of these storefronts are. There's three main roads that I want to talk about and then I-75 as well. Three roads would be 321, Highway 11, and US 70. 321, as we discussed earlier in the video, that's where most of your restaurants and shops will be lo located off of. Um, that'll also take you to the Smoky Mountains. It'll take you through Friendsville, take you to Maryville, and then you'll go through Wallen, Townsend, make your way up to Pigeon Forge. Now, Highway 11, that runs south. It runs parallel to I-75, and that'll take you to Loudoun, all the way through Sweetwater, through Athens, and then that'll take you all the way to, all the way down here to Cleveland, which is right outside of Chattanooga.
there's then there's us 70 70 if you head west it'll take you to kingston if you head east it becomes kingston pike it'll take you through west knoxville all the way to ut's campus and then there's i-75 you'll get off of 321 on to 75 and then 75 will take you south all the way to chattanooga or you can go up and merge on 40 and head east and get to downtown knoxville that way all right so let's take a look at schools right here in the green is the city schools lenore city elementary lenore, lenore city middle lenore city high and then out here is going to be county so you're going to be zoned for your county schools let's take a look at the google maps here you got eaton elementary and north middle eaton elementary goes k through four down here your other elementary school is going to be highland park that goes k through four as well right here you have your lenore city christian academy that goes k through eight and i believe they have some preschool options as well here your city schools are going to be in here your lenore cities your lenore city elementary lenore city middle lenore city high um, loudon is back here and then down here you have your crossroads christian academy which is a co-op for homeschooling and that goes elementary through high school as far as churches go there's a lot of churches in here off 321 a high percentage of those are baptist i know there's a catholic one down here and there's a non-denominational one two rivers i believe is non-denominational that's off highway 70 um in the synagogue i think the closest one is in oak ridge if i'm not mistaken and mosque i believe the closest one is in maribel your hospital is going to be fort loudon medical center that's going to be behind the chilies next to the aubrey's off of 321 close to where it intersects i-75 so here's some of the top employers in loudon county i couldn't find anything about lenore city specifically um, but here's some for Loudoun County. I can't remember exactly where I got this. I didn't make this graphic. Uh, I, I found it somewhere. I took a screenshot of it. But here's some of the bigger ones in Loudoun County. Uh, Malibu Boats, uh, CVS, Kimberly Clark, uh, Wampler's Farm, amongst some others as well. There's not really a, any huge companies or anything like that. But there's there's very good access to knoxville and some of the other areas that do cost of living in lenore city it is 20 percent lower than the national average 35 percent lower for housing four percent lower for utilities and 13 percent lower for groceries i'm using a website called Payscale. i'll link that below so you can take a look at this as well it actually has a pretty cool little tool where you can put in where you're moving from um, what your salary is and it'll kind of run some things and kind of compare the two um, come down here median home price medium rent what your average energy bill is your average phone bill how much gas is per gallon and then your food and grocery as well as health care it's actually a pretty neat little site and again i'll link that below as far as demographics go i'm kind of reluctant to touch on this subject I don't want it to come across as steering or anything like that. So I will link um, the United States Census. So if you want to take a look at that, you can. At the time of this video, the last full month's worth of data that I have is October of 2022. And in October of 2022, the average sales price was 386581 uh, with a median agent days on market of 10 so agent days on market meaning from the time that it went live to the time that it went pending for crime rates uh, this is another one of those topics that i'm kind of reluctant to touch on i don't want anything i say to be misconstrued as biased towards any area or anything like that so i'll link this website below um, it's called neighborhood scout it actually has some cool things some different things to look at um, kind of compares different areas Lenore City is not great for public transportation. If that's something that's a high priority to you, you might want to consider looking other places that have some better options. Okay, so let's look at some food options. Down here, as we had mentioned earlier, 
pretty much all of these, almost all of them, are going to be off of 321. Down there where 75 and 321 intersect, you got your Ruby Tuesdays, you got your Waffle House, every great southern town has a Waffle House, uh, your Shoney's, Aubrey's, my personal favorite, that's traditional southern food, had the best chicken tenders in town, uh, you got your Chili's, a Chinese restaurant over there, you got Italian, Joe's Italian, uh, you got your El Senor Rancho, you got your hibachi and sushi. You got a food city grocery store right there next to the Starbucks. Little Caesars Pizza, Gondolier, another Italian. Then you got your Taco Bell, your Arby's, your McDonald's. You have pretty much all most of your fast food options, most of the big ones. Chick Fil A, um, and then the burgers. Best place for a burger in Lenore City is the burgers. Uh, your Casa Fiesta, Mexican restaurant and grill. Um, and then you have some here off of Highway 11. Uh, you got Master Donuts. You got your coffee shop. Uh, Japanese Grill right here. And you have some other. Oh, and then right here, La Lupita Mexican Store and Restaurant. Um, that's about as authentic, in my opinion, as it gets if you're looking for Mexican. Um, and there's some other options off of Highway 11 as well. But, you know, the majority of them are going to be off of 321 right here. All right, so as far as things to do, one of the biggest things I would say is golf. You have Avalon up here off of Highway 70. You have Wind River, which is in Lenore City, right outside of Friendsville. Um, another thing would be lake. Go on the lake. Um, there's good lake access in Lenore City. They're dubbed the lake capital of the south. I don't know who calls them that, but that's what it says on their website. Uh, and the third, third thing I would say would be dining. Um, it... Lenore City is more of a small town feel, a more quiet, laid back vibe. If you're looking for nightlife, I'd probably recommend going closer to downtown Knoxville for that. Overall, Lenore City is a great, a great city. It's growing. It has a lot of growth potential with Maryville taking off and the easy access that you have to Maryville. You just get on 321 and go. It's also convenient to Turkey Creek in West Knoxville, um, Farragut. So it's, it has a lot of good growth potential. I like it a lot for that reason. If you're looking at some areas outside of Knoxville, Lenore City should definitely be high up there on your list. It's a great place to live. A more country, quiet setting, but it has pretty much everything that you need off of 321 there. I put some links and articles down below. Uh, for some of the stuff that I talked about in this video and also some articles and websites and stuff that I thought might be useful for some of y'all. That's all I got for you for this video. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day.